and there he is, Godzilla himself. Ha ha, Dave, how are you, sir? <laughs> good, man. How are you doing? I'm good. What's going on? All right, well, let, let's uh, let's kick this off then. Um, I, I, and I'm going to say this, you know, uh, I can still remember, and, and this is no lie, the first time I saw a picture of Madame X, and it was probably, I guess, 83, 84, and I'm pretty sure it was a Hit Parader magazine had a you know two or three page article on you guys, and it was just something I couldn't stop staring at because I was so blown away by the look of Madame X, and you know I'm sure people will probably actually say either the girls Roxy and Maxine you, you got attracted to instantly and pulled into the picture, or Brett's two color hair, but for me it was you because <laughs> looking at you. I, I, w- I was confused. I was, like, scared. I was like, this is one ugly son of a bitch. I'm like, this dude, he he, he was just, f- you were frightening. And that image has stuck with me for years. And I, <laughs> and now I see, you know, you see the picture all the time. It's like that most popular promo picture, you guys. But it just, it stuck with me for years. And did well, you, you have, know, like, a... The- Go and ahead. Continue. I was, I was gonna say, did you have like a reaction on people with the whole Godzilla look and uh, uh, feel going on with that? Well, I, you know, oddly enough, I didn't realize <laughs> it didn't occur to me that I look weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was just being me. Uh, oh, that's awesome. It, well, it's the truth. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, here's the deal: when when Madame X. When when we you know we're doing what we did in Detroit as a young band back at that time in the early '80s there was probably I'm guessing around maybe 200 clubs that had live entertainment every night like you know wow. five four five six sometimes seven days a week for some clubs and and wow. we played a lot we we you know we were in a cover band and we did covers and then we started writing music but we played. Every, you know, the agents kept us busy, like literally like every week it would be either a four or five day, uh, you know, at this club and then you have a day off and then you go to another club for, but on our days off, we would go and check out the other groups uh, in Detroit. And, and that was and back in the day. I mean, the, the talent level was really not to, not to say it was maybe any different than any other, you know, areas of the world, but there was a lot right. of really, really strong rock roll acts uh, in Detroit, you know, and a lot of strong players. I mean, uh, Chad Smith from the Chili Peppers, you know, he was, he was playing the clubs at the same time we were. And, and uh, uh, Vinny uh, from Sponge uh, also, you know, and the Ted Nugent guys. And, and I mean, just, you know, you run into Dick Wagner, uh, the guitar guitarist for Alice Cooper, or, Mm -hmm. I mean, God, the Rockets, I mean, you know, Bob Seger, just, just, you know, I, I, I know I, I can't even name, you know there's there's literally hundreds if you if you ever look at Michigan rockers or Michigan bands or or you know entertainers that made it from Michigan that are from Michigan it's right. it, it's like it's literally like about 200 or more uh, if you in, you know if you include like the Motown stuff a lot of entertainers anyhow so you can run into anybody but my my point is is that when we went out and we'd see somebody else doing something it was like we always felt that we had to one up them. And uh, in Detroit at the time, there was so much competition that sometimes you just got to get weird to be different. <laughs> and, right. uh, <laughs> and and that's what we did. I mean, we were like, a, a, we were like, we looked like fucking hookers. <laughs> you know, go, during the day when we go to the grocery store, we were just, uh, just weird. I mean, I look at those photos, I go like, man, that, that's pretty weird shit. But, you know, I really didn't. I I just I've always I've always been a fetish guy, and when the girls hired me into their band, uh, I I I had a, a girl that I dated, you know, prior to the band, and she was a, a you know in a her fetish, and and you know she brought me into that world, and I you know and I just gravitated towards that. So I basically when the band hired me, I took my brought my fetish with me, <laughs> and that was me. I mean. I don't know. You know, this is, I, I, I can't really sugarcoat it. It's just the way it is. Uh, yeah. Well, we were, yeah. Uh, we, when we went to Los Angeles, we, you know, we'd be around the, the clubs on the East coast. We'd be out on the, on the East coast in the summertime, Detroit and in, in North 
northeast uh you know vermont new hampshire and and new york and, and right. uh canada and stuff and you know in the better weather and then when it was the weather became shit we go down to you know texas florida oklahoma arizona louisiana you know the southern states and and do this like you know it was like a banana route you know we just swing around <laughs> you know and in in 84 you know we we and we were writing songs and we started out as a cover band but we you know we like hone our chops you know in front of different audiences around uh america and you know and, and you you know write a song and either it's received well you know or or it's not if it's not you just you know you push it aside or you work on it or whatever so at some point in 80s in, in 84 we felt that we had enough original music and it was like we were so clueless and so uh, naive, you know, it's like, well, it's right. time for us to go to Los Angeles and get our record deal. You know, I re- I remember telling people like, yeah, well, it's, yeah, we're going to go to Los Angeles and get our record deal. You know, like, like who the fuck do you think you are, dude? <laughs> you, <laughs> you realize how hard that is? But we told our agent, book us in Los Angeles. We want to go get our record deal. And, and he booked us, you know, he gave us two weeks. We go out, you know, and we did our Texas to Arizona, Arizona. We bounced over to Los Angeles show up to these venues and like, we don't know who the hell you are and you're not playing here. So we had like two weeks to kill about $1,800 in our road flow. And, uh, and you know, it, we, we ended up having to book a couple shows ourselves. So we went out and talked to, you know, met the, uh, Mrs. Wong and Madam Wong's, you know, West okay. and booked another date at the Troubadour. And we played Madam Wong's, I think it was like on a Sunday or Thursday, one of the two, but this will make sense here in a second. So we play Madame Wong's to, let me, uh, well, the cat from, uh, from Guns N' Roses was our sound man. Uh, uh, he, you know, it, it, he, he was a guitarist, anyhow, for Guns N' Roses, anyhow. He, he was also, uh, no, one of the guys that replaced him after that. Uh, oh, uh, after, Gilby after, Clark? After Izzy. Gilby Clark. Gilby. Okay. I think yeah, I think that's I think I think it was Gil- anyhow one of the one of the guys. It, sometime you'll they'll either verify this or or whatever. I forgot. I, forgive me. I forgot the guy's name. Anyhow, because well, I had a conversation with him after, and I go like, yeah, it's Madam X, blah blah. He goes, dude, uh, I was the song man for you at Madam Wong's the night you guys, you know. So anyhow, this woman, Lucy Forbes, after we played to like you know Chris Holmes was there and and uh, Blackie and just a handful of musicians and really nobody uh-huh. else. Nobody knew who we were. And wow. uh, this woman snatched us up and says, uh, you know, hi, I'm Lucy Forbes, and uh, and I, there's a place i got to take you. Don't even bother changing. You know, come as you are. And, uh, you know, i got, like, crotchless, assless chaps on. <laughs> uh, and when I say ass, assless, it was just, it was you know, like an athletic jock strap made out of leather with, was there, there was nothing covering my ass. My Like, my ass is hanging out. The girls, you know, the girls, with her hair up and, and as little as they were and Brett and she packs us in her cars and took it, took us to this place called the rainbow bar and grill on sunset. And she right. says, don't want bother changing. Every, they're all musicians there. You're going to sit right in everybody. You know, you're, you're going to be very comfortable. So we walk in this place and like, there, you know, there's Lemmy there and uh, uh, Brian May from queen and everybody's in there. Like they're normal. They're not in performance mode. Right, right. <laughs> but we walk in looking like what, like what the fuck planet? Are these guys from? <laughs> it's like you know, it's like oh man, all eyes were on us. But here's what happened: uh, we we walked past this table because the place was packed, and this guy says, "Hi, I'm Robert Street from Jet Records, and who are you guys? And what are you about?" Blah blah blah. So he introduced himself, and we just happened to have some like. Old, you know, now it's EPK. Everything's electronic press kit. While well, we had old school right. press kit, you know, vanilla envelope with some eight by tens and a bio and you know stuff like that. So we give it to him. He introduces himself. There's some other people from the Jet office there uh, as well. And uh, and at the time, Jet, you know, had Black Sabbath and Ozzy Osbourne and uh, Air Supply, Electrolyte Orchestra, and then they brought in Lita Ford after that. Um, so anyhow, so we give him this stuff. He introduces himself, and the next day I called our agent to find out what the hell's going on, you know. Uh, and he's and we also had a second date booked at the Troubadour. And he says, 
Do you know who Don Arden is? I said, no. He goes, it's, it's, uh, Don, John Records, Electro, 180 million records, Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath, blah, 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 blah. And he wants to see you with the Troubadour because uh, apparently the jet office called our agent and and then the agent forwarded this. And this is like pre, you know, there, there was no, right. cell phones didn't even exist. You know, right, if you wanted right. to make a phone call, you walk down to the pay phone and put in about $100 in quarters and call whoever you had to call. Uh, so, I mean, it was really, you know, not, not the, the communication world was very, very slow back then, but so anyhow, we made this connection and, uh, D- Don wanted to meet us. So Brett and I go to the jet office and he says, yes, I'll bring him. I'm coming down, put me on, uh, uh, put me on the guest list, put it the entire, uh, the entire staff on the guest list and, and so forth. So we did. And, uh, we played to again, uh, uh, you know, not not uh, just a handful of people. Again, it was like right. Jackie and Chris Holmes, and you know, and some people like that, and the entire Jet Office there. So, and we played our asses off. I mean, it was like you know, this was like do or die, you know. So sure. after after we finished our our set, went up to the dressing room, and uh, 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 Randy, uh, my bass tech, runs up like his ass was on fire, bursts through the door. He's on his way up. He wants to talk to you. You know, it's like, oh my god, really? So this this <laughs> man, I think he's about sixty years old at the time, like you know, a British gentleman, and he, you know, he, and he carried himself as Sharon's father, and and he he was a tough motherfucker. Right. I mean, this this his his reputation is is it's sugar coated compared to the stories that that he would tell us in his office, like. Like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> this, this is the, you know, I, I was, I was frightened of him. You know, he was, he was, he, you know, he'd pound his fist on, on the desk. I want hits. Boom, boom. You know what I mean by hits? It's got to be cute. Boom, boom. You understand? You go back and write me some hits. Boom. Are we clear on this? I need hits. Boom, boom. You know, it's like, yes, wow. sir. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was, it was, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, yeah, there's a studio, go be creative and, you know, and just, you know, it's like, I need something brilliant. So anyhow, he introduced me, let's backtrack. He comes up the stairs, introduced, I'm, hello, I'm Don Arden, you know, <laughs> that amount. You're my greatest find in the, in, in the last five years. He, he, listen, I, I want you to go back on the road and, and I'm going to sign you to my label and we're going to get, you know, CBS to distribute and, you know, and he's he's going out. I mean, he was so spot on about how he thought he was going to lay this thing out, and then he laid it out exactly like that. Listen, go back on the road and, and continue writing and playing, and call me every day. I need to know exactly where you are. Well, we're going to put we're going to piece this together right now. We're going to put you know connect the dots. We're going to pick our producer, and I just you know go back out and be creative and blah blah blah. And we did. And when we left wow. L.A., we had. Like we didn't even have enough fuel money because we at the time you know we traveled with a, a semi tractor trailer, eighteen wheel you know tractor trailer, really? forty foot trailer full of lighting and sound, and it all went in every night with our road crew. Yeah, you know, we had a six person road crew and the band, ten of us Holy on cow. the road, and then it all came out at the end of the night. We loaded back up, we drive three to five hundred, a thousand miles to the next city, and do it all again every night. We did this for years and years and years. So many hours. We go back on the road, and we didn't have enough money to get out of the state of California because we had to have a fuel permit to get into the state of Arizona, of which we were we were just flat broke. We had no, you know, we ex- we exhausted all of our money in Los Angeles. It was really expensive for us to be there, just hanging out for two weeks, you know, with ten of us to feed ten of us sure. in hotel rooms, and you know. So, uh, long story short, you know, we the club that we were supposed to go to in Arizona wired us some money. We got out of there. We did some uh, some dates for, I guess, for about three or four or five weeks, and then they flew us back, and it's an emergency. you got to come back and do this work on the soundtrack for, for this. Uh, you know, we went from, like, literally living in Motel 6s for, for years and living out of suitcases to they put us in at the Hyatt Regency on Sunset, and I'm waking up at, you know, the sun's coming up because we had to be in the studio at 8 a.m. or whatever. And, I'm you know, there's maybe, you know, the guy's – hands were fresh squeezing orange juice for us and eating flame and young every day. And I was like, I thought, you know, like I must've died and gone to rock and roll. Heaven. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was amazing. But that, that's, that's basically the, you know, that's, that was the hard knocks for the whole event. 
you know, did did you, you know, personally like at that point in time? I mean, you guys signed your deal with uh, with Don Arden and Jet Records and all. Did you think to yourself like, wow, like we made it, or did you think to yourself, okay, now the real work really begins now? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that one more time? Did Did you think uh, when you signed the deal with Jet Records? that you guys had made it, or did you think like to yourself, like, now the real job really begins? Well, I mean, it was – here's the deal. I didn't, I didn't even tell my family what had happened uh, until after the fact because so many times – and, and you, may, uh, you may have lived this. Maybe you understand. Maybe your listeners will know that or, or have also lived this, that, you know, you get your hopes built up in people – you know, they, they make promises that never develop and you tell, you know, and, you, and you're young and you believe it and you tell, you start telling people. And then, you know, within a short amount of time, nothing flushes out and, and it's just, you know, so I had this like, oh my God, I don't even want to jinx this by telling anybody right. what's going on. So it wasn't until after we signed, you know, we were sending checks for, it was a lot of money to us back then, you know, a hundred thousand here, $250,000 there, another hundred thousand here, 85,000 for this, blah, blah, blah. And it, yeah, no, I felt like all my Christmases when they finally, you know, when they finally produced all the paperwork, which was like literally t- telephone books full of, of, you know, legal, this legal, that so convoluted, uh, hmm. you know, just, we didn't even read, you know, we didn't bother reading. It was like, we had an, our attorney there, and he said, yeah, this is good. Sign this, 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 this. You know, it's just like sign, 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 sign. But we don't, you know, did we know what we were signing? No, we had no, yeah. we had no clue. All we, it felt like we had won the lottery, though. But um, <laughs> it was, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of work to do. Uh, but we felt that we had a certain, we had accomplished a certain amount. Did we have any, did we have creative control? We had zero creative control. The album that, that the photo that they used for their first album was uh, a photo session that we rejected. It was done in Texas, and we hated it. And and there was really? no Photoshopping back then. Oh my God! Right. It was, I mean, it was it was so we, it was so painful. Uh, and then CBS airbrushed the pubic hair off my legs, and they airbrushed one of my arms away, and and you know, and made me look <laughs> me, me look even more lurchish than I already look. Uh, it was like, oh my, it was like, oh, it was. Terrible, we're dreadful. We hated it, but we were stuck with it because we had we we signed what we the the contract we signed. We had zero creative control. It was all it was all all Don's. You know, uh, I I want cute hits. I want cute songs. I, it's got to be cute. Do you know what I mean by cute? Right. Don't go ahead and write me a cute song and make sure that it's a hit. <laughs> and I was like, dude, yes, sir. So I mean, it basically sounds like you guys basically became Don Arden's puppets. <laughs> Well, to yeah, to a point. I mean, the band that that they signed and the band that was that actually recorded, as far as style goes, was maybe even two different bands. I mean, High in High School was written. We, we that was written on the road before we ever, you know, that was the song the song that got us, you know, that they felt was strong enough for us to be, you know, a contender in what whatever project they had. Um, let me see. There was Stand Up a Fight was written. Uh, Metal in My Veins. Or no, Metal in My Veins was, was pre written uh before we got our deal. Uh High in High School. Uh oh god, I can't even remember. I, I can't even remember what's I can't got your tongue. Uh anyhow, there's a few of them. And then and then like, you know, come on, come on, we reserve the right. Uh some of those songs, those were written, you know, because Don, you know, demanded that we have something that was, you know, maybe uh, a little more radio friendly or something uh, at the right. time. And, you know, and at, at that point, after starving for so many years and beating yourself up and just, you know, and living like, uh, you know, second class citizens, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, and then again, then having a, you know, a bunch of money, it's like, you know what, I'll, obviously you know what you're doing and, and you know, so we're going to take your sure. direction. So uh, were we puppets? Yeah, willing puppets because we we had we didn't know better. Right. Would I've done it? Would I've changed anything if I could do it again? Maybe a few things, but uh, you know, I don't know. Give me the Did opportunity, he, um, and, and we'll see. The things that he promised you, you said like he he laid everything out and all that. Did did everything he promised? Uh, did he follow up on that? 
Oh yeah, one hundred percent. He it was it was like it it was maybe it was just the way that he did things, or that he had such a clear vision of of how it should go that it, it happened exactly exactly the way to the T to what he said. We're gonna you know we're we're gonna you go back out and play, which we did. Uh, we're gonna pick our producer. You're gonna be on my label. We're gonna get CBS to distribute. All that came exactly. I'm going to get you tour support. I'm going to get you a video budget. I'm going to get you a uh, merchandise deal, uh, publishing, everything. And then what he fell short on is the tours. When we right. should have been out with Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath was, uh, I think they were between singers or albums or something. So they weren't, basically, they weren't even out on the road at the time. And right. Don had. Don Don was a very shrewd businessman, and he wasn't well liked amongst in the business uh, w- between other managers and or maybe agents uh, that had had business dealings with him before. For instance, uh, you know, Quiet Riot. We should we should have been out with them, but Quiet Riot was a support act for Black Sabbath, uh, right. and Bla- and Quiet Riot had a you know a top ten song. Uh, uh, of which I can't remember the title. <laughs> whatever it uh, was, banger. Uh, Metal health. Yeah. Uh, whatever Metal it health. was. Yeah. Metal health. Right. Exactly. Um, and you know, and uh, you know, and then when you reach out to these to these other managers, as far as you know, uh, the Rat guys and so forth, and we rehearsed uh, at, at the rehearsal studio. Rat was in one room, and we were in the next room, and you know, so and the Rat was go like, yeah, you guys got to come out, you know, come out. And, you know, and we're going to do this tour. And you guys should be blah, 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 blah. And we go to management to Don and say, yeah, well, the rat guys want us to go out, you know, on tour with them. And then he go, okay. And you know, contact their manager. And, and then he's like, well, no, that's not going to happen. The kids, you know, for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, in that respect, he fell short on the promises of what, of, of what we, you know, we should be doing. And it, did you guys and, you get know, any uh, any get onto any tours? Yeah, we we played with you know we were we did Lita Ford we did uh, Motorhead, um, you, you know we did a lot of I mean we had a, a huge following, uh, a draw on the East Coast and down you know in in like you know in certain cities or certain states I mean we were like you know maybe you know not so dis in you know uh what am i looking for different than maybe uh metallic or something i mean not right. you know i mean we were you know we we would do like you know do like huge numbers you know mm-hmm. and uh so and we you know we go out, we did headlining tours of the same venues that we we played uh we, you know for higher money of course and and you know in more you know now tour buses and you know and brand new semis and stuff but um yeah, no, the, the the big tours that he promised, uh they just never developed. You know, right. and the band that was that he that he was working uh air supply uh hard that was out playing a lot was I mean their audience and our audience was you know, it was like hundred and eighty degrees <laughs> difference. You know, just that wasn't a compatible bill at all. Right. Wow. Yeah, imagine that tour. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. <laughs> The Misfit Tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So do you, I, I guess, do you think that was the true downfall of the band itself, the original lineup? Well, there was um, – the, the lack of creative creative control had a lot, and we all resented, and, and, and you know, that was a, a sore spot with us. Um, at some point – we were, we were uh, scheduled to go back and do our second record, and uh, the uh, Jet people, you know, we uh, we did have a meeting scheduled with. Well, here here's how it, here's how it was in the in the beginning. We, you know, Don wants to see you, so we go to the office and we'd be waiting in the in the in the like the green room, and mm-hmm. it would be us, you know, Maxine and I uh, or Brett on you know on one couch or Roxy or whatever. Uh, and then a coffee table between us, and then on, on the other couch is Tony Iommi and Geezer Butler, uh, and you know, I mean, it was like, you know, it, it was 
that it was it, for us that was the real deal, you know. Uh, yeah. And then uh, and then later on, you know, they said, well, we had meetings with Don, uh, with Don, and the, they said, oh no, the jet people, like office people, no, no, Don, Don can't see you right now. He's in with the DA. I don't know, well, I don't know what the DA is. I did, had no clue, but I turned out it was the district attorney. But what happened is that he had an accountant that was. Uh, from what I understand, was embezzling oh. from Don, and Don chased him back to Britain and beat the fuck out of him. And, <laughs> I mean, after the fact, Don told me the story. He says, you know, and I, I put my my coat over his head, and and you know, he would pick his head up to to see where I was, and I hit him up and hit him with that some kind of a leaded glass crystal <laughs> ashtray or something, you know, smack in the head, you know, and and you know, he beat the hell out of this this guy and uh, collected some of the money back that the guy embezzled. And then the guy turned around and uh, filed attempted murder charges on, on Don rather in uh, Britain and uh, reported them to government in the United States for uh, taxes. And then Don had that to uh, deal with. So at oh, the boy. same time that we were, you know, that your flights are booked, your, your flats are booked. You got, we picked our producer to, you know, three weeks later, <clears throat> The office is shut down, and they cleared everything out in trucks. And we're going like, hello. Uh, wow. You know, we, we, we just, you know, Black Sabbath didn't suffer. I mean, it was a hiccup maybe for them and Aaron right. Fly and everybody else because they had their, their – they were so right. established, yeah. you know, in their, in their base that it was, you know, everybody knew who they were, and, and they, you know, it was – that was just business as usual. They just go on to a new manager, a new label or whatever. For us, Don was our manager and we were signed to his record label. And then we approached other managers and they're like, you, you're in a contract with Don. Arden? No freaking way. Uh, you know, <laughs> get off my property quick, <laughs> you know? Um, wow. But so, I mean, so that was it. Yeah. So we were, you know, it was a weird, it was just a really weird time for us. And at the, you know, shortly after that, Roxy was being pursued by Vixen, and uh, and Brett uh, went back to uh, to New York to because he played with his in his uh, band with his brother prior to us uh, snatching him up, and uh, so you know they they went and did their thing, and after a short amount of time, you know, in the jet office people was like, Don's got this handled, you know, not too much longer, not too much longer, not too much longer, and you know, and we like. We were so naive. We just waited and waited and waited. You know, a month turned into a year, and a, a year turned wow. into two years. And it was like, you know what? It's this. It, it's this isn't going to happen. It's you know, it's, it's obviously this is this is now done. So then we got a couple. You know, we Maxine and I hired a couple other cats, and we went out and uh, and did our thing. But that chemistry wasn't. That was never the same with players as it was with. Uh, you know, with the original lineup. And right. I, I'll bet you could ask any artist uh, that's had a, a member change along the way, you know, and it's as good as, as the replacements are and as much as they bring to the table, it's, it's just, you know, I mean, for us, it was just never the exact, you know, the chemistry was, was never the same. And, and a band yeah. is, it's a, it's a, the chemistry is everything. Sure. You know, I mean, sure. like take take Joe Perry out of Aerosmith, and it's you know as good as the other guys are, uh, and you put anybody not, else in there, it's just not the same. Or like right. you know Van Halen without Michael Anthony, or or without Dave Roth. I mean, I love the you know the Van Halen, Sammy Hager Van Halen, but without Mike Anthony, and no, no, you know, no disrespect yeah. to uh, to. Uh, uh, what his son? I forgot his. Yeah. Yeah. Wolfgang. Yeah. Yeah. Wolfgang. Right. Uh, but it's you know it's just is it is it if it's probably as different to the band as it is to the audience to see the band as you know as a different uh, you know incarnation or carnation of sure. of, of uh, something you just you just expect it. you hear things you know and see things and when it's not it's you know it's just different and as far as songwriting and, and camaraderie you know between the original four of us that that what is that's unmatched yeah now uh if people don't know uh one of those replacements was 
uh, Sebastian Bach of Skid Row fame. Right. And uh, so, I mean, how did you get along with Sebastian? Because uh, I'm sure you or everybody out there who knows, uh, you know, the Skid Row guys don't get along with Sebastian. So <laughs> how, how was it when you were working with him before he uh, rose to fame? We uh, – okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this story, uh, uh, against my better judgment and against, I, I, I don't like talking about it. I don't, uh, I don't dwell on the past, but I'll, I'll tell you, um, we were looking for a singer to replace Brett and Brett has really big shoes to fill. I mean, mm-hmm. He, Brett is Brett is a great entertainer and, and he's he's a he's a motherfucker and he's got he's just you know he's a, a lot um, right so we did this a Canadian uh, tour and so a guy named Sean Pilot was uh, our liaison in Canada and and we came back to the states and the band kind of dissolved because of the Jet Records thing and. Right. Uh, uh, Sean, you know, said, I, I, you know, you're looking for a singer. I got a singer for you. And he sent us this promo kit of, you know, of this singer. Uh, and I think we were in Phoenix, Arizona at the time, or, or maybe we were back in Michigan. I don't know. But anyhow, long story short, it came in a manila envelope. And we, I pull out this photo of a young Sebastian. I think he was probably 17 at the time. Uh, and he's just, he just looked beautiful. I mean, he's just right. he's a beautiful, you know, young man, you know. And I thought to myself, oh, great. And, uh, you know, guys who look like this can't sing. So, and I pop in the cassette tape, of, and it was him doing this kind of a ballad, like a rock ballad. And it was like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. This kid sing right. like a bird. So we flew him out, uh, auditioned him, fell in love with him. And, and he was, I mean, he was very eager. He was a Madam X fan. Uh, he, he went and saw, you know, we did it several Toronto dates and he was at all the shows and, and he, you know, he loved Brett and, uh, and he, he knew all the songs, he knew everything, he knew all about us, you know, and, uh, and he, he just seemed like the right guy for the gigs, but he was, re- he was 17, I think at the time, really young, uh, had no, you know, I taught him how to drive. He, he lived in my house for a year and a half. Uh, wow. I fed him, we, we wrote songs, you know, we play, played played frisbee at 5 a.m. out, you know, in the summer, summertime, just, you know, we did, we did everything. He was, he was great, but we would walk with him every night, walk around. We had this like 10 mile course. It was like a one mile course where we'd like do, you know, count our laps and that was our miles, you know, so eight, okay. five, eight, six, you know, and we, you know, taught him how to be, you know, how to do interviews. If you, if you're doing it, you know, I, and because Michael Levine from, uh, age, the Mike Levine agency in Los Angeles was our okay. our, our uh, publicity agent, <clears throat> and, and Mike Levine did my, you know Madonna and Prince and Michael Jackson and U two and every, you know the biggest of the big, and and Mike would say if you got nothing to say they've got nothing to print, so be sure to say something. I mean it was you know he they taught us how to do interviews, so we taught. Sebastian, how to do interviews and how, and how, and how to perform on stage and and you know and and he you know he was young and he and we demanded a lot from him but you know he right. said I want to be I want to be great I want to be I want to you know if I'm flat on stage punch me you know spit on me <laughs> humiliate me do do whatever I would just want to be great I want to be you know he wanted to be a rock star if we if we didn't pick him up would he have been a rock star. Of course, because that that was just in the cards for him. Would it have happened with Skid Row at that moment? Maybe not, because the, right. it, goes, the, it goes into another story here. So, you know, he would be he, he would come out and blow his nut the first three songs, and then he would sing flat, and I would come up, you know, boom, you know, <laughs> blast him in the arm or in the back of the head or whatever with my fist, punk, or spit on him, and. You know, you're fucking flat, you know, but what I was doing is, is trying to help him be a better, you know, he, here's the deal. If, if, if somebody go, if somebody do, is a performer and they, and they play and, and you say, wow, that was great. Knowing that they could do so much more. 
there's no incentive to be greater. There's no incentive sure. to push the envelope to be to to jump that that next rung rung on the ladder and be better. And there's a movie sure. out called Whiplash. And if you haven't seen Whiplash, go see Whiplash. It's about a uh, a drummer and an instructor slash performer, and that is the Godzilla Sebastian Bach story right there. When I saw it, it was like so like it took somebody millions of of dollars and thirty years to tell the story of of why and I Sebastian he still harbors this hate towards me. You know, I, I was hanging out with him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then he brought me up on stage, and we and, and we had a moment. And then he brought me back to the bus after. Him, uh, we, and I apologized. I told him why I did what I did, and and he, you know, he and he told me how he felt about me doing that. And and all I can say is, you know, he, it was it was a moment. I mean, we it was it was it was it was it was, it was daylight when the bus left. And all we right. did is, is, is cry and tell each other, I'm, dude, I'm so sorry for, you know, I mean, but he's, he was, he told me, he says, on, at this show, on this date, you did this, that, and that, you know, now the next date we went to blah, 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 to, you know, to the next city, and they knew the, the name of the venue, and, and it was like, it just happened five minutes ago, I was like, oh my God, this, I, he, uh, he said, I was a little boy, and you hurt me, and I, I just wanted to be your singer, and I just wanted to be great, and, and dude, you were great. You were fucking brilliant. You were, you were, but you, I couldn't, I, I, I know you could be better. So anyhow, right. so long story short, or even a long story, even longer. <laughs> uh, and I, I, if you want me to shut up, just say, dude, shut up. No, no, but, no. Uh, just... We, we took, we were invited to a guy named Mark Weiss's wedding and Mark Weiss was our photographer. He photographed Sebastian and with us, you know, Madame X and, and with Mark McConnell on drums. And uh, he also photographed Madame X, a lot of Madame X stuff prior to Sebastian. So, you know, Mark was getting married and invited Maxine and I to his wedding out in uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. And um, at that time, I was just so, like, frustrated with, with Sebastian because he was young. He, he he wanted to party and be, the, you know, and, and live the rock star lifestyle without putting in the, 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 the you know, the work to be sure. that guy, you know. I mean, you can't be that guy part-time. You know, dude, I don't want you to sing great three songs. I want you to sing great 15 songs because we got 12 more to go, <laughs> you know. <laughs> not, not, You know, but, but you know, I, I, I saw him a couple weeks ago, and he was fucking fantastic. And that was the first time I had seen him since the last time he played with me. I never wanted to see Skid Row. Uh, I, I, you know, I just, I was just uncomfortable with the whole episode, but I went and saw him, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and he he was he was every bit as great as I remembered him, you know, as a kid. He was fantastic. He sang perfect the entire set, and it was it was it was just great. But anyhow, so we took so. We, well, what we would, would have happened if you went and saw him three weeks ago, and he sang great for them first three songs, and then he went flat for the rest? Would you have? Still punched him upside the head. (laughs) Motherfucker. I know you can do better than that. Um, Yeah, probably. Uh, But no, I I criticize his performance level. He's a rock star, and he he performs like a rock star. But you don't – that's not something – you're born with it to a point. But you have to – you know, it's like some guys are just – you know, they're just good drivers, and then they become – Good, you're real good drivers, and then they're then they're winning the India Indianapolis 500, or you know that might not be a great analogy, but you know you're born with the skills, and and then you have to hone your chops and and you know continually building, you know and 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 uh, fine tuning everything until you're you know you're at that level. Well, he's he's at that sure. level, but so we we brought Sebastian and Mark uh it was Maxie and I were invited to this wedding and and at that point we had already said well, okay Sebastian great you know we we need to figure something else out this isn't working so he uh he you know Mark and Sebastian weren't invited to the wedding but we brought them anyhow and uh it, well, well we not like we crashed it we okayed it with the bride and groom you know like we're bringing Mark and Sebastian right. we have a place ready at our table you know we paid them for you know the weddings are not cheap, so you know we gave them the the uh, in Italian they say the boost, you know the financial right. donation to you know cover help cover their seat and so forth. So, but anyhow, who was at the wedding? Kevin DeBro, 
Little Steven from the E Street Band, Zach Wild, the uh, 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 John Bon Jovi's parents, um, the Twisted Sister guys. Uh, oh man, it was uh, it was you know a, 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 a wedding of you know rock stars. Uh, sure. So we we all sat in with the wedding band, and then John says, "Wow, you know, I'm I'm putting a." a band together called Skid Row. We don't have a singer. Your guy would be perfect for the band. So like, dude, he's, he's all yours, <laughs> you know? And that was, that was the most, I mean, that was it. They, they, that was the connection right there. Uh, wow. So, I mean, now, were did you he deserve shocked? it? Like, yeah, he, he deserved like, it. But, oh. you know, and then John whipped him, you know, in the shape as well. But Right. Now, how about like, uh, as time went on and, they started uh, having success. What were your feelings about that? Were you shocked or? Well, okay. In that movie with Flash, the, 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 the drummer who's uh, does the best drum solo he, he feels he can do. And the, and the instructor slash his, you know, perform the, the guy, the band leader walks out on stage and says, you just shit that turd on my stage in front of my crowd. Really? Although it was fantastic, but he knew that the kid could do better. Um, and, uh, what, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> what, what were your feelings? So <laughs> what oh. were your feelings as Skid Row, uh, rose to fame and Sebastian became such a star? Well, some of our, some of our crew went to work for him after, uh, you know, when he, when he went on a Skid Row. So they would kind of give us the lowdown on what's going on. And Sebastian's, uh, he, he just, he want, I mean, he again. He wanted to be. He he wanted to be a rock star so bad that he put 110, 150 percent into it just to show us up. I feel. Uh, and was I resentful? Um, no, I was happy for him. Except when he would like diss me, you know, uh, you know, at, at a concert, you know, blah blah blah, you know, fuck you, Godzilla. <laughs> like to, to twenty thousand people, like oh, I. Yeah, at one point I called up Doc, his manager. I said, you tell that little motherfucker that if he ever <laughs> says that shit about me again in public, I'm going to fucking sue him for slander. Uh, and I never heard uh, I never heard anybody, you know, reporting back to me that he said this, that, or the other thing. And, you know, and were we childish? Yeah. Uh, do I regret some of the stuff that I did? Yeah. But had I not done that, would he be the guy that, that he is today? I don't think so because that's all part of of being uh, of of just the development stage. Right, right. I mean, honestly, it doesn't really sound like you did anything wrong. I mean, you just were pushing the guy, maybe pushing too I hard put, at times. I, and... I pushed him to the point of, of him, you know, hating me for thirty years. Uh, but I didn't realize that I had. I was just I was being me. Uh, and, and trying to get the most out of him, and and, right. and kind of at his request, <clears throat> and I knew how bad he wanted it, and he told me if I'm flat, punch me; if I spit on me, humiliate me, and I did. Right. Because that's you know, that's just it's just who I am, and <laughs> but you know, but it was for the it was the, there was for, it was for a good cause. It wasn't because I was yeah. you know some you know some lowly kid who's you know, at a karaoke show and singing terribly, I would probably buy the guy a drink and say, thank you for, the, for amusing me. <laughs> but it wasn't, you know, I wasn't disrespecting somebody who I thought was, you know, a hack and disrespecting them for that reason. It's like, I know that you're, I know I've heard you sing better. I've heard you sing better at rehearsals. I've heard you sing better at other shows. I need you to sing better every night, every song. Not just you know, not not sketchy, uh, because at the time that we had them, we still we were still commanding a high dollar, right? Uh, and playing for big crowds, and the people expected to hear somebody that you know, sure, sing, you know, like Sebastian sings now. But I, I mean, also too, it's not like I mean you can look at it two ways. Where not only were you doing it for him, but I mean you were doing it for the whole band as well. I I did it or three the, ways for the, the, sake the crowd of rock and roll. Yeah. Uh it was there was I right wrong 
I don't know. Uh, who who would I do it for? I did it for, yeah, every, every for the for the whole event for him, for us, for the crowd. You're right for everybody. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, can hear you're, your you're voice. You're really you're, you're, you're upset by it though. I, I still bur- I still I, I, my blood boils whenever I have to talk about this. I could just I could I could just spit. It's it's not a comfortable zone for me right now. Wow. Uh, and only because nobody you know people, you know they don't they're disbelievers. They don't know, they weren't there. They don't know. Sure. Uh, sure. You know it's my word against uh, uh, in, you know. He is. I'm sure. It's, I'm sure he would tell you the, pretty much the same story now. Although he still harbors that, you know, I, 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 I was not just in treating him like that. But honestly, I just had to do that. Uh, I, when some, you know, if you let somebody slack, and you know they have greater potential, they just they won't rise. Right. They'll just be that. They'll just be a, a, a half-assed part-time. You know, I can be great one minute. I can suck the next minute. Right. And and that's not acceptable. Yeah, like I, I I don't really think you did anything wrong. I think you're beating yourself up where you really don't have to. Well, I I it, it, I've had I've had nightmares for many years over this whole thing. To be honest with you, um, so am I, am I beating myself up? Uh, yeah, you know because he was he was young, you know, and he wanted to be great. Uh, and right. I, you know, I I I could have been kinder, but. Uh, you know, it, just a certain rock and roll urgency that's like you just can't, you know, you just can't wait for for something to happen. You have to make things, and that was us. We just made stuff happen. You know, right. uh, there, we didn't wait for somebody to do something for us. We found a way to get it done. Now, how about the rest of the band? Like, how about Maxine? How does she feel about it? I mean, being that you guys were like the the originals, did she? Was she in agreement with it? Did she, did she think you went too far, maybe? Or you, I, you know, I can't speak for her. You'll have to ask her that. I, have, I have no idea. Um, I think uh, I, I, she probably thinks I carried it too far. Uh, I would imagine, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't really. I don't know. You'll have. That's something you could discuss with her. I have no idea. Okay. Now, after this whole situation with uh, Sebastian, I guess leaving, did you leave at the same time, or did you guys get another try to get another singer? Or? Yeah, we, um, we, you know, we regrouped. Uh, we had Mark, the drummer that we had with Sebastian, Mark McConnell, um, mm-hmm. and we had uh, we had uh, my, 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 a guy named Dave from Tennessee, I think, uh, good looking kid, just clearly not right for the band. But we had uh, obligations that we had to take care of, you know, uh, uh, dates and stuff. And we needed a guy that, you know, that could sing. And Dave certainly, right. he could sing. Um, but, you know, it's again, there it's the chemistry. And that was, mm-hmm. you know, that was oil and, and water, you know. Uh, right. Him and the band. There was no nothing gelled about it. it was It was just not. Uh, and not a good mix, right? But you know, no disrespect. He 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 sang well and and he was entertaining, but it just wasn't right. So uh, then, after when you left, what did you end up doing? Because you, I mean, you were kind of like off the radar. Right? Like I, I never knew what happened to you, and I was like, you know, deep into the whole scene and following everybody, and it was just like, I Godzilla uh, went away. The whole band went away, just basically, yeah, except for um, Roxy. Maxine. Did a solo, you know. I I I basically retired from the music business, moved back from Los Angeles, and bought a nightclub. Then I bought another one. Then I bought another one. Um, oh wow! I did that for like ten. Yeah, I had three big clubs. And I, I got tired of that. If I and I've always had a production company, which I love lighting and sound. Uh, you know, bigger, better, brighter. You know, um, and that's what I concentrated on, and that's what I still do. I have a lighting and sound company. I do you know festivals and concerts and and uh stuff so i i've always been a techie kind of a guy uh in that respect uh as far as the band and godzilla goes um again it's the the chemistry uh you, you know if i can't be in Madame x i just don't want to be right you know and I, you know what i mean i mean i i, I was you know guys would call me up 
Oh, uh, God. Uh, you know, uh, just you know, I, I won't I won't mention any names anyhow. Uh, guy, right. you know, hey, uh, you need a bass player, come on, you know, blah 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 blah. What are you doing? So it's like, oh uh, yeah, no, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, in a well, partially because it was uh, bad timing because I had you know a lot of I, a lot invested in nightclubs and, and employees, right? And, you know, in a you know a huge responsibility. Uh, and to make sure that thing, you know things were done right, and, you know, in constant and so forth. So I, you just can't pick up and, you know, I wasn't 18 years old anymore. Uh, right. I, you know, I had big shoes and uh, and a lot of people that depended on me to do whatever I did to, you know, everything happened. So I just couldn't pick up and go play with somebody for, you know, six weeks or whatever. Um. But uh, yeah, so no, it's uh, if I can't be a Madame Max, I don't want to be. Uh, nice. You know. Yeah, that's cool. That's, 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 I mean, that's where your, that's where your heart is, and that's awesome. That that's friggin' awesome. That's, well, it's just it's just who I am. You know, I love to. Now, play how about like uh, as time went on though, and and more bands came out with the outrageous looks, and even over the last you know fifteen twenty years with like uh, Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie, and all that, where you guys could have fit in throughout the years. Have you ever had like a, I don't know if you want to call it resentment or just like, like we could have been there, we should have been there feeling? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean, I I I love Manson uh, and Rob Zombie and and I anything over the top crazy, that's that's what I gravitate toward. Um, so I, I like all that, you know, I love in this moment and, you know, what they bring to the table. Um, right. You know, I, out, you know, outrageous. Uh, I, I'm all about that. And I think the rest of the band is too. Um, but no, did, did I ever, no, I didn't ever, I was never resentful of, you know, of somebody else's uh, uh, fame or, or fortune. Um, I'm glad for them. You know, I, I no, think not, at some not point resen- we, uh, not, not resentful of them, but just, feel like you guys still could have been in the mix and a major player like with these other bands? Well, it was because as much as, 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 as much as Don did for us in some areas, we, he, you know, the, the whole organization fell very short. Uh, right. Which, you know, and we went from, here's what it was. We went from new ad on MTV to uh light rotation to media rotation in a pretty, you know, a sh- short amount of time. I was very quick, and then, you know, as luck would have it, um, the PMRC comes out. And I don't know if you, you, know if you remember them or not, but yeah, it was oh, yeah. head spirited by Tipper Gore, and uh, Tipper Gore held our album up on TV and said, "You will not buy albums from artists like this," you know, because we were controversial and and I, really we didn't even say fuck. We just spelled it out. Uh, got your tongue. Um, so, um, and then at AOR, album-oriented rock stations switched their format from AOR to CHR, current hit radio. I started playing more hair, cl- or hair, what you know, Boy George and whatever, you know, Madonna and Prince Michael Jackson and, you know, and those, you know, uh, that kind of uh, genre and, uh, and switched their format. So we went from like a hundred and whatever, ads stations you know in america uh mm-hmm. it, you know and because their format was changing so was uh you know you're getting dropped you're getting dropped because they're they're going to a different format <clears throat> and uh although we were we started losing ground in america we were gaining ground elsewhere like you know in europe and japan and and uh and so forth and you know and in england uh in the uk and so forth so i mean we were we were still, you know, doing well in other parts of the world, but in America, it uh, the whole scene changed. And like I said earlier, the bands like Rat, um, Motley Crue, and you know th- those bands already had an established uh, fan base and, and foothold. Right. Um, and, and because we, we, you know, it was our first record, and and we got kind of got cut short in the middle of that the the promo section of it. And Don's uh, reputation and and people not wanting to add us to their tour because they didn't want to work with Don, 
you know that that, uh, that all just uh, played in the uh, the lack of you know whatever success that album could have done. Now let me just say this: uh, we've remixed and, and remastered the We Reserve the Right record, okay, and we pulled out a lot of. I mean, it, now it. I was never never loved the way that record sounded, uh, but now I love the way it sounds with today's technology. Uh, and going back in and 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 re you know and just re queuing stuff and retweaking it and and it's like oh my god this it just sounds fantastic <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like I, I you know it's like this is the way it should have sounded in the first place, um, but you know there's 30 years of technology uh, to you know uh, that play into it but it was uh, yeah it sounds great I mean we have a we're I just you know I'm in the studio right now and. Uh, uh, we just finished. Uh, well, another '80s rock song is is uh, the first single, and we're okay. finishing a record, a, a new record, 30 years later of great, great music. The songs are are, are really strong. There's a little something for everybody. Um, and Roxy, who was never a contributing writer in the past, for whatever reason, I don't know, but now she's just coming up with this these these brilliant lyrics that it's like, like, <laughs> dude, this, you know, this, it, this is, it's, this is really good, dude. I mean, it's her, her lyrics are really good. Uh, That's awesome. I, I don't know where, I don't know where they're coming from, but she's, you know, and well, I guess we're all jazzed about it. Brett's, you know, Brett lives in, in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, and we're in Michigan and, and he flies in and, uh, and he'll sing, you know, for three days we'll write and then he'll fly back and we'll continue working on the stuff that we've got, uh, I mean, there's really no sense of urgency for us to, to finish this record because it, it, we've been working on it for 30 years. <laughs> no, I mean, really, no, we haven't worked on it for 30 years, but it's 30 years in the making. I mean, I, I've had like 30 years of songs stuck in my head and my heart, uh, and it feels good to, to release that and get that out there. And likewise, everybody else is just like coming up with like, wow, this is really good. This <laughs> this is a great song, and this is a great riff, and this is, you know, it's we have a really, really good record. Uh, and I'm I'm anxious for people to hear it. Did, did you ever expect like this day would come? Thirty years later, the band, the original band, would be back together no. again. No, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Hell no. Uh, no, I never how did. How did it happen? How did it happen? Well, Matt Seen, uh, she's been you know she's had a solo career ever since uh, Madam X, and. She posted something on, and I was never a Facebook or a, a media guy. I, I don't, I, you know, my idea of, you know, I just, I, you know, it's like, I, I don't want to know that you're polishing your, your toenails and or you just got your hair. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, you know, and, and I always said, like, you know, if I did, if I ever have a Facebook, I'm just like, I'm, I just got done sharpening my lawnmower blade. And I'm, you know, or, or you know, or so, whatever, you know, just got done, you know, I won't even go there, but, um, so anyhow, she posted uh, this thing that said, like, uh, you know, Madame X is going to record a, uh, a song with all original members, of which I didn't even know that this was going on, you know. But she posted that, and uh, Sweden Rock uh, Festival called or, or, or messaged her. Is this true about the Madame X thing? She goes, yeah. And they said, well, if it's true, is it going to be all original members? And she said, yeah. And then they said, well, would you be interested in playing at Sweden Rock Festival? And I, I knew Sweden Rock Festival. Uh, I've been following it for, you know, more than a decade. Uh, it's one of the largest rock festivals in Europe. And uh, then she said, you know, hey, do you want to do this festival? And by the way, do you want to, do you want to record a song? And <laughs> I said, yeah, well, somebody write a fucking song already. Uh, you know, and then uh, a month or six weeks goes by, and and Roxy messages me and says, uh, "Hey, do you have any do you have any music yet?" It's like uh, you, you're looking look at me to, you know, yeah. I said, "Yeah, I got a song." I then, you know, because I had in my mind that you know this we better have something new for this Sweden rock thing, which is right. It was oh man, it was amazing. But so I, I had this this idea in my head, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with another 80s rock song, like like the world needs another 80s rock song. Well, you know what, here we are 30 years later and we're going to give you, you know, another 80s rock song. And that and that ended up to be the hook, you know, and it's like 30 years later, my uh, my uh, inner child is screaming or, or whatever, I don't even know. I, there's, uh, 
I think 30 years later, so here's, here's like 30 years later, I'm still fighting my demons and my inner child still kicking and screaming, which is, which is exactly, I, you know, I just, I, I'm never going to grow up uh, and you can't make me, but uh, it, you know, it was the opportunity for us to go out there and present something new. And it's a fun song. It's a stadium banger. It's, you know, ain't no That's wrong a great song. With another, it is my song, you know, and it's, it's fun. And it's, and it's, it was our first, you know, it's like, when when we said yes, we'll play Sweden Rock. We had one song, and and I think in my mind, and maybe everybody else's in the band, after when we played at Sweden, there was no tomorrow for for Madam X. There was you know, hey, thank you very much for having us. You know, <laughs> thank you very much. Good night. You know, and and never see anybody again. Uh, and it was great. Thanks for having us. You know, we're out. But it was so much fun, and and I expected. You know, we were, we were on – Black Sabbath played the night before, at, you know, on Friday night. We we went on at 12.15 in Sweden uh, on our stage. which It was a big stage. The capacity in our area is 15,000 people. So uh, during wow. sound check at 10 a.m., I'm looking at this field, uh, you know, of, you know, the, the audio tower and, you know, maybe 100 people milling about going like, oh, wow, this is going to be – this is going to be a lot of fun. You know, and I thought, <laughs> well, we'll have 1,500, maybe 2,000 people in front of our stage. And we'll play, and we'll you know, and we'll just be done. So, you know, as sound check, and I go back to the the uh, dressing room, and you know, prepping for you know to play and so forth. And uh, I, as I'm, I'm always the last one. I don't know why I'm the last one, but I'm just the last guy. So uh, as the band's kind of already on stage, and I hear this the audience go, "Not on that," and it sounds like a lot of people. And I walk up the ramp, and I, you know, I go, I'm in the backstage area, and I can see through the amps you know, amp line that there's a fucking lot of people out there. It's like, <laughs> holy shit. You know, this is the real deal. You know, throw my bass on, blah, 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 you know, and go out and, and, and kick some ass. But it was like, you know, I think we had around 13, I think they said like 13,500 people or something at our stage, which was, they they said we, you know, they've never seen that large of an audience that early in the day uh, at their festival. We had a lot of people there. And then our meet and greet area or the line was, it was, they, you know, you have an allotted amount of time and we exceeded right. our, our time because still hundreds of people in this cattle, you know, line wow. to, you know, for the meet and greet thing. So they extend our, they doubled our time and then they almost tripled it. And then they finally cut us off and, you know, and there was a bunch of angry people, <laughs> uh, but we did the best we could. I mean, there was just a ton, uh, just a lot, a lot, a lot of people. So, you know, Sweden was, it was, that was just a great, it was, it was a nice ending, but it was, it was a better, hello, here we are again, because that's what it right. turned into. It's like, you know what, this was a lot of fun. And, and I love the eighties and I love everything about the eighties and hate me if you want. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> I love the music, but uh, there's something about the eighties that was so, you know, there were there were so few boundaries and so little consequence uh, for your right. actions. You know, and and now it's you know you can't pee alongside of a car in a parking lot without getting arrested for indecent exposure. You know, <laughs> in the eighties, you could do whatever you wanted and nobody cared because it was just the, you know, it was just a beautiful time to be, you know, to to being a a kid. Oh, it was. It was great for me. I know that. <laughs> I feel yeah. I feel well, cheers, like, cheers to you. You know, we're gonna have to have a cocktail sometime and and and, uh, and discuss discuss this in depth. Man, it was eighties are great. It, it was. It, it, you know, I, it's funny because like when I I talk with my kids about like music and all, and, and my older daughter she's seventeen, and uh, whatever music is on or whatever I'm listening to, I mean probably seventy five percent of the time it's something from the eighties, and it's like I'm giving her like rock school lessons like. This is this, and then I'll like shoot her emails and send her pictures of the band and like educate her on this stuff so she knows what they look like and who it is. And oh, that's yeah, cute. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, you know. I was watching yeah. old Twisted Sister videos from like '82. I mean, when we when we moved out to New York, uh, I had no idea who Twisted Sister was, but Brett introduced us to the to the band via uh, an album, you know. And then we started playing shows, and then. We started playing with, you know, with Twisted, you know, and or we go see them, and then, uh, you know, and then we ended up being on their shows. And same thing with the Kicks, right? Love those guys. Um, and I've been watching these old uh, these YouTube videos from of Twisted, and my God, 
what a what a great band. I mean, and Andy Slater, yep. still to this day, is like, you know, he's 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 a rock god. You yeah. know, yep, flawless. They're amazing. They are amazing. I, I I saw. I mean, I saw them back in the day a couple times, and then I saw them. They they played Philly like five six years ago. And it was probably one of the best shows I've seen in years. That I couldn't believe how good they were. I was completely blown away. Well, here's see one of my clubs. Uh, I I would do a lot of uh, live entertainment, and I had Quiet Riot, and I had you know uh, Bullet Boys and uh, Slaughter and Warren and you know groups like that, um, Firehouse and and what's a common thread between all these groups is the front man can sing his ass off. Like Jamie Lane when he was when he was on, he was a motherfucker. Kevin DuBrow. Right. It sounded like the record. It was Yeah. You know, kind of, you know, oh my god, it's just like you know that that was 80s, you know. You you had to have a guy up front that could, you know, that could sing. Like mm-hmm. you know, like a bullfrog or like a bullhorn rather. Yeah. You know, great big pipes and a great big voice. This is true. And now today it's all uh, you know, What's that? Audio, uh, auto tune and everything auto else. Tune, right, right. Even, yeah, yeah. So yeah, although, yeah. although that's a that's a, a useful tool, uh, and we're you know we're working in a million dollar studio with all you know if we we could cheat in in every direction at any moment uh, because of the technology. But you know we we do it old school. You know you you put a good yeah, Neumann eighty seven U eighty seven out there. Uh, you know, a six thousand dollar microphone in a booth, and you tell it, you keep singing it until you got it right, bro. Even though we could, <laughs> you know, you can uh, do a lot of tuning and stuff, but it's it, it's just got to be right, yeah. you know. You know, somehow cheating is you know cheating is cheating. Now, like uh, the other day, I was watching. Uh, uh, actually, I think it was yesterday. It was uh, uh, an award ceremony for soccer. Uh, anyhow, what the band is performing on stage. Uh, in front of this group of attendees at this event, and I, I'm like, okay, well, they, they sound good and look good and so forth, but I noticed the guitar has no jack in it, the keyboard has no jack in it, there's no <laughs> mics on the drums, they're just, they're playing to a they're playing to a track, right? Uh, and a lot of that goes on. Yeah, you know, Madam X is, we're, you know, we're there's no there's no tracks, you know, what you see is what you get. And that's a beautiful thing. Well, it's you know, it's just it's just the way we've done it. So, all right. So uh, now that we're in the 2015, you said you, you guys are working on. Is it going to be a full length album you're going to be doing, or? Yeah, we've got 15 songs now. Uh, wow. I mean, titles like uh, "Die Trying," uh, "Good Stuff," "Wish You Away," "Freak Parade," "Till It Hurts," "Big Noise," uh, "Resurrection," "Hell Train." Uh, you know, just you, re, you know, it's it's diverse. Uh, but every song is, it, you know, is rock solid. It's really, it's they're well written songs and they're recorded well. And I hope people uh, enjoy them as much as we we've, we've enjoyed making them. Nice. And when can we expect that to be released? Well, we're 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 aiming for early uh, fifteen, uh, okay. but we still have you know a few of them that are you know in bits and pieces, so to speak. You right. Know, it, 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 because the you know Roxy plays in Vincent, so she she'll go out and do you know uh, dates in the summertime. She was really busy, so that held us up a lot. Um, right. And then Brett will fly in, so it's not like you know in the old days we would lock ourselves in a rehearsal room and and you know knock the songs out and tighten them up and and then go in a studio and lay them down as a band and then right. go in and redo your parts and add parts and do your vocals and blah blah blah. While our building process is a bit different. Now and it it goes like uh, if I've got a you know a song it'll be laid down with uh you know basic uh, electronic drums or you know or the computer generated drums uh, as a guide and then you know the bass guitar and the guitar and then people come in and you know match you know redo the guitars or uh, you know and then I once the guitars are done maybe Roxy will come back into town and redo the drums so now it's real drums and then once the guitars down and the drums are down then I come in and lay my bass over it. And so our building process is is a bit complicated and not so easy, and that's why it's so time consuming. So twenty, you know, twenty fifteen, it'll be out for sure. We were hoping for uh, 
you know, February, March, there's still a chance that that's going to happen. Um, but it's, the, the songs are so good that it's, you know, there's no sense in rushing stuff only to, you know, only to rush it. It's, right. There's certainly, the songs are certainly worth putting the effort into. Cool. And, um, let me see here. You, you know, you, you never told, how did you get the name Godzilla? Uh, that was actually Brett. Um, I've, 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 uh, shamefully, I've got a pretty short fuse and it doesn't take a lot to set me off. Um, <laughs> it's just the way I am. Anyhow, I, I was having a temper tantrum on stage one time, uh, and something wasn't right. And, and I was wrecking things. <laughs> so, and, uh, after Brett said, you were like Godzilla going through Tokyo. Uh, <laughs> and they, then the crew started to call me Godzilla. And then the band started to call me Godzilla. And then the press started to call me Godzilla. And I ended up being Godzilla. That's awesome. It just stuck. It, it, yeah, it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, when I was playing with Sebastian uh, a couple weeks ago, he brought me up on stage and, and, uh, I, I don't. We were doing Youth Got Wild, I think it was, or something like that. Anyhow, so he is, this tech gives me a bass uh, to play, and I'm playing bass, and and this bass player is playing along, you know, standing next to me, and I'm beating this thing uh, like I owned it, and and he's looking at me like, dude, don't stop, but, you know. Uh, but I, I know I play hard. Uh, oh, that's great. You know, I, I I had to I apologize to him, and I. After I realized that, oh yeah, you know what? This is this is even your guitar, dude. So you break it in half. It's, it's somebody else's mess. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now, do you have kids now? Do I do what now? Do you have any kids? Yeah, I got a three-year-old. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I have a wife. Uh, uh, we've been married for uh, God, uh, seven or eight years. Okay. <laughs> that sounds bad. I don't even know. Uh, we did get married. I remember that. Anyhow, we have uh, a three-year-old, Leonardo. Leonardo. And he's, uh, yeah, after Da Vinci. Nice. Leo, we call him. But he's he's uh, he's so amazing. He's so smart. And he's he he sings. You know, he's he's going to be a singer, a musician, I guess, at some you know of some kind. But he's got great pipes. He's his pitch is great. He's uh, he loves to play guitar, uh, even if it's just you know plucking the strings and he likes beating on stuff. Uh, right. But he's smart. I mean, he's really he's like, he didn't get the smarts from me. I, I know that. <laughs> he's like, this kid is brilliant. He's, you know, he knows the planets. He's, he's three years old. He's like three and a half years old. And, and he, he adds in some tracks. He reads. He's, uh, he's like, he's like a, a little man, but he knows, you know, Mars and Jupiter and Venus and the Milky Way and, you know, wow. asteroids. I'm like, how do you know this stuff? <laughs> I, 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 I swear I'm telling you the truth. It's frightening. I don't know where you, I don't know. You know, we, we work a lot with them and I, I'm a, you know, I'm a hands-on guy. Uh, you know, when I'm not calling on their tables, playing hide and seek, I'm, we're, you know, everything's a learning, you know, it's just, you know, it's just the way we, we do it. You know, you count going up That's the awesome. stairs and count going down the stairs and, you know, right. and so forth. But uh, yeah, it's, he's amazing. Thanks for asking. I just love him. Now, have you ever shown him pictures of you from back in the day? You know, it's funny you should say it because so, no, I, I, he, he doesn't know who I am. Uh, but he <laughs> does. He'll see like an uh, like a, a magazine or something. Of, even if the photo is just a little tiny, you know, let's say it's it's an inch and a half by inch and a half or something minuscule. He goes, Daddy, you know, he he just he knows he knows that's me, but he doesn't know that, you know, he doesn't right. know Godzilla. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't know his father. He knows that he knows that that's Daddy. And you and you said earlier, you said, you know, did you ever think that you, you know you get back together with Madam X? And and I said, no, but oddly enough, I have all all the old tour equipment uh, in storage. You know, uh, twenty four. Marshall cabinets with mirrored fronts, uh, a gigantic robot head that went up behind us, the you know, Madam X robot. Uh, I kept all that stuff. I've got, I opened up a, a wardrobe locker just before we went to Sweden to see if there's anything I could use. And all my old leathers are still in the wardrobe locker, like they're ready to go on stage. However, after 25 years of baking in, in a storage unit, 
uh, the letter is pretty, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like uh, p- pretty petrified, <laughs> but it's, you know, everything's still there. Like I was, re- you know, like I was ready to go back on stage at any minute. Wow. Kind of funny. That's awesome. You held, you held on to all that stuff. Isn't it weird? No, you, you know what? I, I, I would, I would have <laughs> done the same thing. I totally would have done the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was so much a part of me that it's like, I, I mean, maybe like, I don't know, you know, I, uh, a certain part. I don't know. There's so much DNA in, in those in that old dried up <laughs> leather. Oh man, uh, crazy. That's funny. Now, did, did I also see somewhere that you grew up with Madonna or went to school with Madonna? Yeah. That's you're calling out my age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she was in. I went. We went to West Junior High School together, um, and she um, she lived on across a street called Walton Boulevard, and I lived in subdivision on one side of Walton. She lived in the subdivision on the other side. But we went to West Junior High School, which was a common uh, junior high there. And uh, I went to school. I was in seventh grade when Madonna was in eighth grade. Okay. Um, so, but I always remember in school that she, that, cause I used to, you know, back when you're in seventh grade and, and the girls got breasts, she, she was a target for me. And that was her sister, Paula. So I, I like, you know, Paula was my pseudo girlfriend or whatever, because for whatever, you know, whatever desires I had, but anyhow, so Paula was Madonna's sister. And, but I always noticed that Paula had this super sexy, just she was just different from the other girls, you know. But I really didn't understand, you know, what it was. But she was just right. different, you know. Uh, one night, this is kind of funny. Uh, I was talking to, her, to Paula's or Madonna and Paula's brother Chris in a local restaurant, and uh, and we were you know out playing, and this is probably around two thousand or uh, not two thousand. No, it was nineteen eighty two ish. And uh, I said to Chris, I said, "How's uh, how are the girls are meeting Madonna and Paula?" And he said, "Oh, you know, Paula's." go to school for, uh, you know, fashion design or something like that. And Madonna's in New York, and she's demoing records and, and stuff. And he pulls out this paper. He starts to read me the Lucky Stars lyric. Lucky, you could be my lucky star, blah, 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 blah. And I thought to myself, this is no shit. This is so, so like, incredibly stupid of me. And, you know, I, I thought to myself, like, who the fuck does she think she is? I'm the rock star in this. <laughs> 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 so we we go – to Los Angeles in, in 84 and get our record deal. And I hadn't gone back to Michigan and you know, I hadn't come home. Right. So, I, cause we're on the road all the time and I don't know what's going on in, in the rest of the world or in my hometown. And I'm sitting in my apartment in Los Angeles and I'm watching MTV because every once in a while we'd be on there and, you know, and I keep seeing Madonna, you know, lucky star, lucky star, lucky star, you know? And then it, it was like a waterfall. It had, you know, somebody poured a, you know, a bushel basket of water on my head, like, like, oh my God, that's Madonna Saccone. <laughs> that's, and that's the song, you know, it just, I, I, I somehow I, I never put the connection together. Right. So then we came back after our record was out and everybody's like, fuck you guys, you know, <laughs> let's talk about Madonna. I'm like, okay, I get it. Wow. Did, did, now did Madonna ever realize that, uh, you were in the music business and, uh, and Godzilla? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I, I re, you know, I, time I saw her, well, I shouldn't say that. I saw her perform after that, but uh, I, I remember doing a, uh, a talent show at the junior high and, uh, and I, my band did uh, 18 by Alice Cooper. No, no, we didn't. We did uh, elected. I think it was. Yeah, it was elected. I had a little, uh, you know, band in, in junior high and uh, she came out and, and did her thing. Uh, and I don't remember what she did, but I remember that she performed and I think she won. If I remember correctly, wow. um, no, I don't know. No, I never talked to her after that. I mean, she's Madonna. She could she could buy the state of Michigan if she wanted. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> or whatever. I mean, I, I mean, she's. No, I know, mean, she, she's, she's no Madonna. Longer, and, so. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just don't understand how she thinks she's like royalty now. I don't. I don't get that. I. You know what? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> when you have that much money, you can be anything you want. I guess so. I guess so. I guess that's how it is. I mean, you anoint yourself yeah, I mean, royalty. She, she, I want to take a, a trip to outer space, uh, of which will I ever be able to enjoy that, you know, because of my, the financial restrictions? Probably not. However, <laughs> she can. <laughs> so she, you know, 
if she ever needs a travel partner and she's going outer space, hey, Madonna, <clears throat> Godzilla, I'll, I'll carry your bags. No, that would be uh, a blast. No, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't talked to her. I haven't talked to Chris. You know, the family, uh, th- there's just pe- there's handlers and people that keep, uh, you know, everybody uh, pretty much away from them unless they want to be involved. Sure. But her, her daughter's going to uh, one of the local colleges here. Uh, oh, wow. Par- pardon me? No, I said, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, she's going to Michigan State, uh, I believe. Um, cool. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the family's still in the area. Um, but, yeah, she's she's certainly done well for herself. Nice. All right, so uh, I, I guess we'll wrap it on up now. Uh, so this is, what I, this is what I want to do. Okay. Um, for, for, for you and your listeners, uh, what I'm going to do is smash a base and we're going to give it away to uh, if you want to do something, uh, some kind of a contest or or uh, a charity or whatever you decide you want to do with it. But we're all, I'll, I'll take one of my bases uh, and autograph it with via a little bit of destruction, and then we'll have the band put uh, their signatures on it. And you guys can do uh, an '80s tribute, do it to a charity, uh, uh, one of your winners, whatever you want to do with it. Put it on your wall, throw it in the fireplace. I don't care. Once it's on my hands, that's the blood's on your hands at that point. You know, it, it, here, here, it's it's funny that you say that because um, when I first started emailing with Brett and we started getting this whole thing going, um, and then you had emailed me and you told me about smashing the bass and all. I emailed my two buddies who were like my my two buddies from back in the '80s who were still tight, and we always email back and forth. If we're not emailing, emailing back, Goofy. Uh, porn or naked girl pictures, it's 80s songs or 80s music or whatever. So I emailed him last week. I said, yo, rem- remember this band? And I emailed him the picture over. I said, uh, I'm going to be interviewing him for the show. And I said, um, the bass player, Godzilla, wants to smash a bass. And we were all like, that's freaking awesome. And then I emailed him over your new song, and he's like, great, thanks. N- now you got me singing this freaking song all day in work. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, you know what? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, I, dude, I, I, I don't know how many. Here's what I did. I, 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 I think I broke probably more bases this year than maybe in, which anybody else, which may qualify me for the Guinness Book of World Records. But let's not talk about destructing stuff. What I've done is collected a bunch of guitars and bases, and I gave them out to uh, inner city kids and. Uh, you know, uh, church, you know, for, to, you know, music is so important and, and shame on, on shame. It, it's shameful to think that there's some, some kid out there, somebody that might get some enjoyment, be, you know, playing for others or just playing for themselves or maybe make it a career. And so what I'm, what I did is I collected for the holidays, I collected a bunch of guitars and, you know, not as terribly expensive stuff, squires and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, stuff like that, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, you know, cheap performance and stuff like that. And, and I gave them away, but anyhow, so that's something I, I enjoy doing. And, uh, I, awesome. I, I, I would like other people to maybe take this idea and, and, you know, it's giving is, is everything, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just pay it forward. Uh, it's, it's music and, and music should be, you know, it, it's because somebody can't afford to To go out and buy an instrument doesn't mean that they're not worthy of of you know sharing their talents with somebody else. So if I can help somebody realize you know uh, a dream or, or a desire or, or bring joy in that respect to somebody, uh, I, I that's kind of one of my new missions. But um, yeah, nice. you know I'll I'll, I'll uh, yeah I, I can either break the guitar and video it uh, so it's authentic, or we can just you know sign it and give it to you, and I'll, I'll pick. If it's going to be an intact one, then I'll I'll pick uh, a player that I that I uh, use frequently, so it's got a lot of you know uh, patina, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, now, you, know, you know, listening to you talk about all that um, and, and everything that we just talked about for the last whatever it's been hour hour and a half, um, people really will get to know after hearing this interview the true man behind Godzilla, because there is a man, and his name is Chris Dolber, 
and he is not just the Godzilla monster that people might think he is. So, I mean, you, you, this has been a great interview, and I, I, I want to thank you, seriously. Oh, thank you. Uh, and, and thanks for the uh, for the compliment. I, I certainly enjoyed it, and, and you know, it's – it's a fantastic life that we uh, that we have, and, and you know, and I don't want to waste a, a freaking moment. <laughs> I have, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, if I died right now, I, dude, don't shed a tear. I've had a wonderful life. I wanted to be a rock star when I was a kid, and, and I did that, and, I, and I've had the chance to redo it again. Uh, nice. You know, and and thanks to you and you, and your uh, listening audience, and 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 you know, people that. You know, it's it's all about people, man. It's like, right. you know, music music doesn't mean shit if it's if there's nobody there to hear it. You know, it's got, I agree, hundred percent. You have to have listeners. Yeah, you know that's like uh, back in the day when I was playing in local band here in Philly, and uh, you know we we would be writing songs and working on songs and all, and it was just I would always see the same thing like sitting here and practice working on these songs over and over without realizing we're going to get to play in front of a crowd with these songs or record them so people can hear them. Like, what is the point? Like, it's just, there's got to be an end result. And that was, right. The, you needed that gratification or whatever it is at the end of the day. Exactly. And it comes in different forms. Uh, you know, and don't get me wrong. I love, you know, I, I, I love just sitting on, you know, on a chair or in a couch and, and, you know, playing guitar, you know, noodling and, you know, and, I, I do that for me. I entertain myself. I don't need, you know, I could be, I, I don't need a lot of, I, I'm not a fancy guy, dude. I put me in a sure. cave, you know, on a, on an Island and I'll make cave paintings. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll be on a hollow log. I, I don't need a lot of, you know, I can, I can entertain myself quite, uh, or myself rather quite well, but you know, yeah, it's like, you know, there's, there's no sense in working on a record, uh, you know, in, in, putting a lot of time and effort into it. If, if there's nobody, if nobody's there to hear it, you know, it's, it's really uh, a moot point. It's, you know, sure. it, it takes fans and it takes a listening audience, you, you know, doing what you do with your listeners and, uh, and then, you know, bringing the bands in and, and helping the bands to, uh, you know, to meet the audience. And that's what you've done. And you know what, let's, let's break a guitar or two and, and give them away or, you know, or, break a guitar and give a good one away and you find a charity or find somebody that's, you know, a deserving, you know, uh, uh, student or, or a person or something and, and, uh, help them, you know, create music. Yeah, absolutely. I love that idea. Cool. All right. Well, uh, let's see, uh, two things before I let you go. Uh, number one, can you cut a quick ID for me? Uh, you know, this is Chris Godzilla Dober of Madame X. And you're listening to Totally Driven Radio? To- what is it? Totally what? Totally Driven Radio. Totally Driven, gotcha. Yep. Go for it. And it's Godzilla from Madam Max. And you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Awesome. Let me do that again. Go ahead. Uh, did I get the ID right? Yes, yes. Hey, this is Godzilla from Madam X, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Sounds good. And pick a song you want me to play. Um, I think another '80s rock song. You well, know that, what? That, and, listen, that's a that's a given. Pick pick another one. Uh, Metal in my veins. There you go. And. Uh, I'm gonna get you um, the re, the remastered, remixed. We reserve the right, and I okay. tell dude, it it sounds uh, it's just those. That's what the way the songs were record. I mean, that's the way they were written, and and the, they were recorded that way for some reason. The you know, I listen to the old the old LP, and I don't hear hi hats. I don't hear cymbals. I you know, it just sounds, you know, it's like where where'd all that stuff go? So you know, we. We remixed it and, and remastered it, and everything is there. Like the, it, the songs flow, the songs flow better. The, the, a lot more energy. It's just like wow, you know, this is this is the way I wish that it was, you know, transiated uh, or translated rather the transients. Uh, but it, you know, it just didn't happen. But you know, this 
we get a second a second chance at it. So anyhow, I'd like to get you that. Uh, and if, cool. Uh, now, did you guys release that, that with, or were you going? No, through it's, it's 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 actually kind of top secret. Uh, we're we're going to release it, but um, I'm, I'll get it to you first. Okay. And uh, and then we've got we're working on the uh, the Sweden Rock. Uh, they're, they're doing a documentary about the band, and uh, we're doing five for the fans. Uh, the songs will be high in high school. We reserve the right. Come on, come all. Uh, She's Hot Tonight and Metal on My Veins. Uh, and it's okay. accompanied with the live uh, DVD. Uh, they did a five camera shoot and, and like whatever, how many, I don't know, how many, you know, channels of recording it was. I don't even know. A lot. Uh, wow. So that's, that's being mixed and edited right now. And that looks and sounds amazing. It's like, after, you know, we hadn't played together in 30 years. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and we rehearsed. Uh, Three days prior to we rehearsed in May. We rehearsed in May with Brett for three days, about three hours a day, and then we did a, uh, a dress rehearsal at the Diesel Concert Theater in uh, in Detroit area here, and that was our, our our performance. And then a month went by, and we flew to Sweden and we played, and uh, and that was you know the performance you see is a band that that we were so when we were young and, and doing it you know every day every week for years and years we were really good uh however for not doing it for 30 years it's still pretty freaking good <laughs> a lot of energy i mean it's you know it's it was uh that's the man that sweet the sweet audience also was just freaking uh amazing and uh we hope to get uh we put a bug into our agent's ear and uh and told him to get us on the m3 festival which is in maryland in may uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they just, as a matter of fact, they just announced the uh, bands the other day, I think it was. Yeah, they, there's still some some openings, from what I understand, um, and we we would love to be on that show. Uh, we used to play Absolutely. on the East Coast a lot, uh, had a great uh, following in, in uh Baltimore area, um, you know, in New York and, and so forth. So, you know, it would be nice to, and we got in our face, you know, our, our social media, we've got a lot of... Uh, fans from that side of the uh the country so it'd be nice to do that absolutely now how about um did, did you guys ever play philly um i can't remember i don't think so i don't think he's did. I, yeah I, I don't think so we did uh uh Lam- you know of course a lot in new york lamore um, yeah lamore's and out on long island uh hammerheads and cheers and um uh god uh up and down the uh uh connecticut uh and then you know but no philly i don't think so I, yeah I no don't i don't think, think so. so here's a story though uh we were with sebastian actually uh we had a we we're coming up from i don't know carolinas or something anyhow so we stopped at my mom's house in uh in Feasterville, and uh, okay. my mother had this. She bought the, the the Hershey candy bar people. The family had this house in the 30s, and it was gigantic. Oh, it was it was you know marvelous. You know the walls were like three or four feet thick. Uh, it was just gigantic, and, and they had this a tomb actually out in the yard. Uh, after they bought the house, they were trimming this uh, the rose bushes away from this berm this berm like thing. And they discovered that they had doors that opened up. They went down, you know, the flight of stairs into this arched way made out of stone room. You know, it got down the bottom of the stairs. And there was a doorway that was walled off to the right, one walled off uh, ahead of you. And then the one on the left opened up into a room that was maybe, I don't know, 12 feet by 10 feet wide, something like that. Wow. With an arched ceiling. And in there was, it was, a, it was a, you know, tombs. Um, so that's not where I'm going with the story. Anyhow, um, <laughs> we, we parked the bus, uh, in front of my mom's house and we're all sleeping. Right. And, uh, about oh, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., the neighbors frantically beating on the door. Boom, 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 boom. My mother, you know, opens up the door and it's the neighbor lady. Your bus rolled down the hill and it's in the front yard. Uh, <laughs> the bus, the brakes on the bus went out somehow. I don't know how, but. The bus ended up rolling down the hill backwards and took out 
five or six mailboxes along the way, missed a car that was at the bottom of the hill. There was uh, like it dead ended with a with a, a barrier and then uh, d- dumped off to a river. Well, the bus didn't make it that far. It veered off, missed the car that was parked on the road, went in these people's yard and knocked down this gigantic pine tree up against their house. And uh, it was such a, so much for the day off. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. Yeah. I, 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 have you been back true. to Easterville since? <laughs> um, no, but you know, I no, I have not. No, she, my mother, she moved. Uh, she, after there, she moved to Northeast Pennsylvania. I had a farm on a lake on Lake Erie, and then uh, uh, when I started opening nightclubs, she moved back to Michigan, and uh, then you know she moved to the town where I opened the first club. Had a, a house built by the Tequamina Falls, which is the largest, second largest. Falls east of the Mississippi. It's only second to Niagara. And, you know, it's a, it's a resorting area. It's beautiful. But that's where she spent the rest of her days uh, happily. And, uh, uh, no, I Google uh, I, I Google Earth, uh, that area, and look at the house and stuff because I always loved that that old place. That was that was really neat. That's but awesome. that's it. No, I haven't, I haven't been back there. Uh, nope, not a few years. Wow. Cool. So, and I guess we should throw out there uh, where everybody can find Madam X and find you. Well, uh, Madam X is uh, Madam X Facebook um, and uh, Madam X slash Madam M A D M A. Let's do this again. M A D M slash X dot org is the uh, website. Cool. And I'll be posting all those things, yeah, all the links and everything, everything for everybody. And yeah, you can you find me at Chris Dolliber on Facebook, C H R A S D O L I B E R, on Facebook. A uh, friend requests me; I'd be glad to uh, chat with anybody. Cool. I, I'm all about it now. I want to talk go. about sharpening my lawnmower. Actually, I don't even have a lawnmower. <laughs> I have a service. To cut. I have four acres. There's no way that I could get out. I, no, dude, I'm. I, I'm not. I'm not the lawn mowing kind of a guy. Uh, not me either. Especially when it take me two days to do it. I, you know, so once a week the the guys come and they're done in an hour. <laughs> I don't even have a lawnmower, so I won't talk about sharpening lawnmower blades. But <laughs> me either. I hire the guys. They come uh, and they're done in five minutes. Thank you. Goodbye. I don't want to be bothered. Yeah. I don't have time for right, that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't even. I don't even. See, my guys usually show up when either I'm sleeping or I'm not home. So. It just gets done. That's it. As long as it gets done. Cool. All right, well, Chris, All right, friend. This has been friggin' awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, um, we're gonna we're gonna contact each other after this. You're gonna give me an address where I can send uh, the guitar, and I'll uh, video the uh, the demolition, and then get everybody to sign. Now we're gonna have to. I'm gonna, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to do the video, and then. Uh, you have the pick card. I'll send the pick card to Brett and have him sign it, and then in turn it'll come back to Michigan, and we'll sign. Well, I'll sign it too. So there's a little bit of there's going to be a little bit of a lag because of the geographic uh, location. Right, right. Yeah, that's cool. Not a problem. Okay, so yeah, let's do we'll that. Get it all done, and and then uh, yeah, and I'm doing uh, I'm interviewing Brett tomorrow night, and then I got to get the girls lined up and uh, put everything all together. All right. Well, sorry about all the. The dialogue, the editing is going to be terrible, I'm sure. You, you know what? I, I was already thinking, I might have to do two parts to this. Well, what, whatever you want to do, sir. And if you ever <laughs> want to chat again, I'm, I'm, I'm yours. Just give me a shout. Sounds good. Okay, yeah, we should probably chat after the new record comes out. We can discuss that. Absolutely. I think you're really going to Ab- like it. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll play some new tunes, and yeah, Definitely. And I just sent your friend request, so we'll be in touch. Very good. Thank you. Cool. All right, man. Okay, well, have buddy. a good night, and uh, talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Take care, Take care. Chris. Peace. Yep. Remember, play it loud. You got it. Bye. Okay. Ciao.